So far we have developed and validated an application which will copy the files which are in JSON file format into Parquet format. As part of that process, it even partitions the data by year, month and day. To ensure that the application logic is working as expected, we need to validate using certain best practices. Let's get into those details. Some of the tasks which we'll be performing is getting the schema, getting the count, previewing some of the attributes to ensure that the data match between the source and targets and so forth. I'll not be covering all the scenarios at this time, but some of the basic scenarios which we typically use for almost all the use cases as part of our data engineering application development process. That being said, first I have to launch PySpark CLI. As part of our labs, if you want to launch PySpark CLI using Spark 2, you have to use PySpark 2 command. And also if you want to use Python 3 as the programming language, you have to export PySpark Python by setting it to Python 3. Once this is done, you should be able to say PySpark 2 so that you can actually launch PySpark 2. To launch in YARN mode, you have to say hyphen hyphen master YARN. When you are running on a multi-tenant cluster, there is a possibility that many people might be using the cluster at the same time. It will try to start with 4040 port and it will retry for 16 times. It will start failing after that. To overcome that, one of the way to address is by setting a property called as spark.ui.port like this. This will take care of setting spark.ui port to zero, which means whatever port is available using that port, the Spark context will be created for us. Now we can hit enter. It will take care of launching PySpark with Python 3.6.8 and Spark 2.3.0 as part of this cluster. Now I should be able to import something called as get pass. The reason why I'm using this is to get the OS username. I can say username equal to get pass dot get user. Username will be the user using which I have logged in. Now to read the data from the source, I can say df or source df equal to spark dot read dot json because the files are in json file format. The location is nothing but slash user slash username. So username will be replaced with training at runtime then itv hyphen github then landing then gh activity now i can hit enter it will take care of creating the data frame for us you can see that data frame is created let's print the schema get the count and also get the count by date we will take care of all the three things to print the schema we can say src underscore df dot print schema you can see the schema details here. There are so many fields. You can scroll up and you can confirm what all fields we have. Then you can actually say src underscore df dot count to get the count. It will take care of giving us the count for 2021 January 13th, 14th as well as 15th. Once we get the count, we should be able to get the count by date as well. For that, we have to group by date. This is the count uh, in our source location for 13th, 14th and 15th. Now we should be able to get the count by date. For that, I just have to say src underscore df dot group by then created date. However, created date also have the timestamp to ensure that it is only grouped by created date. I have to use the function on top of it. So let me come out of this real quick and then uh, use a function called as uh, two underscore date. Let me say from pyspark dot sql dot functions import two underscore date. I'm not 100% sure whether this function exists or not. It exists. We can validate whether we can use this function to get only the date part by saying src underscore df dot select two underscore date, then created date, then say show. You can see that it is actually throwing an exception because uh, it uh, could not find uh, a column with this name. There's a column with that name. I don't know why it is not showing up. Let's uh, remove this to date function to make sure that the column exists. Let me remove to date and run this. Okay, it is complaining saying that created underscore date is not there. It is actually created yet, not created date. So it's my bad. So I have to say created yet, not created date. Now I can go back to this and change this to created yet and hit enter. Now it is running. We should be able to see few records. We will see whether the timestamp is ignored or not as part of the output. If it is working as expected, then we should be able to group by using two underscore date and we should be able to get the count by date. You can see the output here. It is working as expected. Hence I can say src underscore df dot group by two underscore date then created underscore yet dot alias 
created yet the reason why i'm defining alias is otherwise it will actually give a cryptic name for this field you can see here now the column name will be created yet only instead of having two date of created yet it will be created yet only now i can say dot count and hit enter it will return a data frame to preview the output we can say show like this and hit enter now we'll be getting the count for each date earlier we got the count for all the three days it is nothing but uh, approximately 8 million let's scroll up and see here the uh, count is nothing but 8,339,829 records by grouping by date we should be able to get the count for each date now you can see the count for each date using the source data frame now let's create the data frame for target and validate for that i'm actually creating something called as tgt underscore file underscore path it will be set to f slash user slash username then itv hyphen github raw gh activity this is the target file path we can pass this as argument for spark.read.parque to actually create the data frame from the target location i can say tgt underscore df equal to spark.read.parque then tgt underscore file underscore path hit enter it will take care of creating the data frame for us once the data frame is created we can actually print the schema get the count get the count using group by and validate against the source data frame results i can say tgt underscore df dot print schema to print the schema you can see the output here it is quite big now i should be able to preview that data by saying tgt underscore df dot show let me select only one attribute which is nothing but repo i want to get everything from repo that's why i'm saying repo dot star and i should be able to say show we can even run this against our source data frame let's say src underscore df and see whether it is giving the results or not it will not give the same results because uh, the way data is uh, stored in source and target is different when it comes to the order that's why it might not display the same results however the results uh, will be similar you can see the output here we got the repo id repo name and the repo url with both source data frame as well as the target data frame when we run these pieces of code now i should be able to say tgt underscore df dot count to get the count on source data frame we got approximately 8.4 million even this one should return the same number there should not be any deviation from our source data frame because we haven't filtered any data as part of copying from json files to parquet files let's wait until this run then we'll actually get the count you can see the count here it is exactly the same what we have seen earlier now i can say tgt underscore df dot group by either i can use created yet or i can use the combination of year month and day which are derived from created yet itself in this case i'll be using the combination of year month and day then i will be saying count then say show to run the query and see the count let's wait until this runs and let's validate the counts it should match the earlier query results you can scroll up and see if we can go that far i think i'll not be able to scroll up uh, to see the count against the source data frame but the counts match i have ran this quite a few times and every time the counts match this is how you should be able to validate by comparing the sum of the results uh, between source and target if there are any transformation rules that are applied between source and target you have to consider those also as part of the validation so far we have not only developed the application we have validated locally then we have deployed on a multi-node cluster we have validated on the multi-node cluster we even went into the details related to comparing the data between the source location and the target location by running some of the standard queries or code snippets